Uh, those of you that are trying to think outside the box and do things just a little bit different, I'm going to get ready to ask family of faith to come. But before we do that, I want to open up in prayer. I want to ask God to bless these grounds today. Now, I know that normally when I pull in the parking lot, I feel something a little different. And then as soon as I open those doors, I can tell something's different. But today, as I came up the road, I could just feel something different. And as we pulled down in the parking lot, I could just tell that today was going to be special. I, I don't know how God's going to work. I don't know how God's going to move. But I know that He's going to move. If we'll seek Him, if we'll ask Him, if we'll do what He's asking us to do in uplifting His name in That's this right. difficult time. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads as we say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, Lord, we're thankful for you. But I'm thankful that in the midst of turmoil, I can still be thankful for a God who knows our every need. I'm thankful today, Father, for salvation. I'm thankful today that I know where my hope lies. My hope lies in you this morning, Jesus. And we ask God that you bless this service. Be with the girls as they come to sing. I'm asking God that you would fill them with a power and anointing this morning. And I'm asking God that every song sung would uplift your name and be an encouragement. To would be an upliftment and a life, Lord, to a lost and dying world. I pray, Lord, as we preach. God, we won't come with any type of new message, Lord. We're going to come, Lord, as Paul came. I would not know anything save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The message is the same. We ask today, God, that you would just anoint and touch and move. And bless us today, Father, and help us, Lord, to uplift your name. We're thankful for the opportunity, Lord, and I pray, God, if there be one person that does not know you today, Lord, before it's everlasting too late, they would come to know you today, Jesus. We appreciate you. We love you. We're thankful for you. And just ask for your help and holy anointing in everything that we do. It's in your name we pray and ask always in Jesus' name. Amen. If the girls will come and go ahead and sing for us. Amen. Can you grab that mic?
make me call you back in. I'd shake everybody's hand at that back door. I miss it. Miss it a lot. Yeah. I miss seeing all of you. Yeah. I'm so glad that you all come out this morning. I love each and every one of them. Just pray for me that I will do better. I love you all. Bless you, Curtis. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. And he will lead me to heaven. Pandemic or pandemic God. Bless you, Gary. I said the other night I was heartbroken we missed our revival, but I believe there was a bigger one to come. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, God's made sure that we got the message outside of these church walls and all these church walls that we always talk about doing. It's going out on the internet and the Facebook that you look around. Yeah. It's spreading through Reamer today. I don't know how far all this can be heard, but these people hearing this, whether they come to hear it or not. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Gary. Bless you.
and hard also. And I'm thankful for that and I fought this week. <laughs>
Bayern.
turn your Bibles this morning to the book of Malachi in the third chapter. It'll be hard enough to try to keep the pages from turning. going to read one verse this morning. I'm not going to keep you long. Uh, the girls did a fantastic job singing. Uh, I've enjoyed myself. If you've enjoyed yourself this morning, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Uh, the book of Malachi in the third chapter verse 6, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, and I change not. That's right. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Uh, uh, you can close your Bibles. Be seated this morning. I'm going to close mine so it doesn't blow all over the place. Uh, but I thought I just had this uh, one thought this morning, and, and, and I'll let you go. But we've got to hold on to the unchanging hand of God. In a world that's turned upside down, in a world that things are just uh, completely out of control, uh, we have got to hold on to that hand that never changes. Uh, the Bible says there on the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Well, why are the sons of Jacob not consumed? Because their trust is in the Lord and God doesn't change. Amen. God doesn't back up. God doesn't make mistakes. And if you're going to trust anything in this day and age, you've got to trust in God. You've got to believe in God. You've got to know who He is, what He is, and what He's able to do. And the first thing that you need to realize is that He wants to save you. Yeah. Many people say God's got a great plan in my life. What is it? God wants to save your soul. That's right. That's the plan that He has. Uh, now the Bible says in uh, Jeremiah 29 chapter in the 11th verse, uh, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, uh, yes. saith the Lord, uh, thoughts of peace uh, and not of evil, uh, to bring you an expected end. Uh, there'll be an end that comes to this world. Uh, there'll be an end. All this will come to an end one day. Uh, and if you know the Lord, uh, you've got an expected end. Amen. But if you don't know the Lord, you've got an expected end. That's right. Everybody's got an expected end. You, you, uh, there, there used to be this saying, uh, uh, we, when we'd be out playing basketball, they'd close the gym down and they'd get over the loudspeaker and they'd say, uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. There's a lot of people that believe they're just going to hang out here. They're just going to continue doing things the way that they're doing them. Uh, hey Amen. There are two places that you'll go in this life. Uh, you'll either go to heaven when Christ is your Savior, or you'll go to hell uh, denying everything there is to know about Him. Uh, you don't go to hell today uh, for adultery, adultery, uh, a cussing, drinking, and all that. You go to hell because of unrepented sin in your life. Uh, we as Christian people uh, have tried to classify sin, uh, big sin, little sin, uh, sin that you can still get in with, uh, sin that you can't, uh, but that place will be perfect uh, and there will be no sin that enter in there. Amen. That's good preaching. I believe this morning that people have got to get to a place where they realize just who God is. That's right. God has shut this whole place down with one very small microbacteria of far beyond what we can see with the naked eye. And this whole thing has come to a halt. Life in general. Now, I've never seen the like of essential people as we've seen over the last week. Everybody's important now. Everybody's got to go somewhere. Everybody's got to do something. Everybody's essential. This whole thing has been stopped. Sports have stopped. Your ability to go and do things freely has stopped. All because of one small little sickness that's come. But there's a sickness that put a halt to, to things years ago. And that was sin. Amen. And because of sin that entered it, into the world, it all came to a stop. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had everything they needed. Until sin like went into their life. Right. And when sin entered into their life, their eyes were open to a world that God never intended for them to see. See, God gave them wisdom. We preached this, I think it was on uh, Wednesday night. They had wisdom. They had knowledge, Michael. They had all of that. They just didn't, Fred, have the knowledge of good and evil. They knew good. They had all the wisdom that they would have needed. God told them to name all the animals that He created. He told Adam and Eve to name them. 
which means they knew and they, they had wisdom. But that tree was there for their protection. Do you know why that we have the Lord in our life? He's our protection. He's there to protect us. He's there to be there for us. Uh, he's there to uh, guide us and to protect us from the things in this life that we can't control. Uh, there are a whole lot of people out there uh, that believe they had control over their life uh, and control over things uh, until all of a sudden uh, this sickness comes uh, and now nobody's got control of anything. Yep. And we have found just how bad we need God. I've seen people and heard of people asking for prayer that a week and a half ago they weren't asking for prayer. They weren't concerned, Richard, with God. They weren't concerned with what anything that had to do with the Lord. They were going to live life and they were just going to keep doing things the way they wanted to do them. But God has got attention. And I'm thankful this morning that He's still in control. That's right. I'm thankful He doesn't change. I'm thankful if I'm going to trust in something, I'm going to put my trust in something that doesn't change. And that's the Lord. And because He doesn't change, I can put all of my trust in Him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge, acknowledge him. him. And he'll and he shall direct thy path. He didn't say in most of your ways, he didn't say in the ways uh, in the times when it's convenient for you. He didn't say only in the times when you're sick, when you've got financial troubles, when you really need him. He said in all thy ways. Uh, that tells me when things are going good in my life, I've got to keep my focus on God. Uh, when things are going bad in my life, I've got to keep my focus on God. Uh, because both are going to happen. Uh, and whether you're lost or saved, uh, you're going to have hard times. Uh, you're going to have difficulties. Uh, you're going to have things that come up on you. But I'm telling you today, uh, my life as a Christian, uh, I've got far more good days uh, than I do bad days. Uh, I've got far better uh, than I do bad uh, because I've got the Lord. I've got something in my life that I can hold on to. Yeah, amen. If we're going to make it through all the things that we're facing today, we have got to get our trust and our hope in Jesus Christ. We have got to get our focus back on Him. I see a generation of people that are growing up and they don't know what church is. They don't know who the Lord is. They may know who God is, but they have no idea who this man named Jesus is. They may acknowledge God in different things in their life, but they don't know who Jesus is. And I've got a concern with a group of people uh, that the only time they open their Bible uh, is when they've decided where they're going to tattoo some verse uh, on their body somewhere they know nothing about. Uh, amen. You've got to know God better than that. Uh, you've got to believe in Jesus better than that. Uh, and you've got to understand uh, He's more uh, than just a person that we talk about, uh, but He's the Savior uh, of the universe. That's right. And if you're going to make it to heaven, and not everybody goes. Not everybody makes it to heaven. He said, many shall say unto me in that day, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. They'll say, Lord, did we not cast out devils in thy name? Did we not do many marvelous works in thy name? And he'll look at him in that day and say, depart from me. You that work iniquity. Some of you here are members of Reamer. Some of you here are not members of Reamer. It doesn't matter. If your name's in our church directory or in our role, that doesn't get you in. That's right. Being a member here at Reamer Hill or at Sand Run or Fall Rock or Berg or Cold Springs or any other church up and down the valley, that does not make you a Christian. That does not get you into heaven. That does not give you an opportunity. All that does is say you belong to something bigger than you are. But if your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're walking a dangerous path and you need to get that fixed and you need to get it fixed now. Amen. He told the disciples, he said, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and, and all these evil things. Uh, he said, but, but think not or be not happy that I've given you these powers. He said, but you need to be glad that your name is written in heaven. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are real proud that their name is uh, connected to a prestigious company. There's a lot of people that are very excited at the fact that their name is tied to some sports team. There's a lot of people that are excited that their name is at 
Reamer's church directory or Falling Rock's church directory or on their roll book. But none of that's going to help you. That's right. None of that's going to help you. You've got to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There You've you go, got man. to be saved. Yeah. As I was prepping today for the service, uh, I, I, we had all the equipment stuff that we knew that we needed, and I knew uh, Steve uh, had, had uh, Steve Hayes had given us this uh, uh, podium a while back, and I knew we were going to get this out, and then I, as most people do, I forgot about the most important part. Yeah. An altar. Amen. See, today you may be scared to death of getting germs or getting uh, contracted with the coronavirus, but if you've got sin in your life, you're on a far dangerous path, far more dangerous path than worrying about somebody giving you that virus. Amen. That's right. Yeah, you're living in a, in a situation and in a time that is far more scary than ever contracting some type of disease that doesn't have a cure. See, there's a disease today that, er, that half of mankind still has. They're sin sick, but there's a cure. That's right. There's a solution, Fred. There's hope. See, there's a lot of people that if you would, if you were to come down with this disease, this sickness that they're talking about, you wouldn't stand a very good chance of making it. But if you're under the sound of my voice, whether it's on Facebook today or in this parking lot somewhere or in a yard around here, and you've got this disease called sin in your life, there's a cure. There's a hope. There's not a wait list. You don't have to put in for it. It's not some shot you can come up here and I can give you. There's not a vaccination. Amen. You can be cured forever. Amen. You can live a wonderful life and have that cure in your life. But you've got to kneel down and ask God to save your soul. Amen. See, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what the book of Romans tells us. That all have sinned. You say, Austin, I've lived a good life. That's not good enough. Austin, I help people. I do everything that I can do to try to do good. That's not good enough. He said, for we're saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. But that it was a gift from God. It's a gift. You say, and a lot of people can't understand it because it's a free gift. See, we've got a, we've got a society that, that's got this whole free thing. They, they, they got that messed up. Just because something's free to you, somebody paid for it. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Amen. There is no such thing as free in this life, Michael. Somebody somewhere paid for it. You say, is it the same with salvation? You better believe it. Amen. Uh, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians in the 5th chapter and the 20th verse, uh, for ye are bought with a price. Ye are not your own. Uh, Jesus Christ paid uh, for salvation uh, with His precious blood uh, on Calvary uh, so that you can have the free gift uh, of salvation in your life. Amen. It's a free gift. But you've got to come and accept it. You've got to come to know Him. This may be the shortest sermon that I've ever preached in all in my time since God called me to preach. And a lot of you are going to start shouting here in just a minute. But I believe somebody on these grounds needs to be saved, Fred. I believe because we're outside the church instead of in the church, there's somebody out there listening today that wouldn't have walked through the doors of this church, but because the Lord allowed us you realize today that God's allowed all these things. Yeah. He's allowed us to gather here today to uplift His name because we're not in the church, because we're out here. Somebody that wouldn't have walked through those doors is hearing my voice. But more than that, God's tucking on their heart. That's right. Amen. See, there's, a, there's a, a bunch of people that believe I'll just get saved when I'm good and ready to get saved. You'll get saved when the Lord draws you to an altar of prayer. Amen. But you'll not get saved at all. That's not me being harsh. That's me trying to trying to explain to you that maybe somewhere along the line, somewhere in your life, somebody lied to you and told you you've got time, you're young. See, that's the, that is the biggest lie that the devil tells somebody is you've got time. You don't need to accept that today. You've got time. 
You've got time to get your life right. You go out and you can live however you want to live. you got time to go out and do whatever you want to do. And when you get older, when you have children, when you get married, uh, that's when you can get saved and raise your kids in church because we know that's what's important to them. Uh, but amen, you may not get that opportunity when that comes around. I believe he was 19 years old the other night over in Sissonville. Young boy lost his life. Do you think that for a moment when he got in that truck that he thought that was going to be it? No. Nobody does. Nobody wakes up in the morning and thinks, today's going to be my last day. But you've got to live your life thinking, today very well could be my last day. I'm not going to preach a bunch of prophecy to you this morning, but I'm going to tell you this. There's not anything else that needs to line up biblically for the Lord to split the eastern sky. Is that true? There's not one thing else. People say, well, I'm just waiting on one more thing. I mean, if just one more thing would happen, God has fulfilled everything that needs to be fulfilled. And at any moment, uh, He could call this church out of here. And if you're not saved, you don't get to go. Amen. I don't make that call. I'm glad that God didn't put that in my hands, Fred. Yeah. Amen. Because I've got compassion. But I don't have the kind of compassion that the Lord's got. I'm long-suffering. But I don't have the kind of long-suffering that the Lord's got. I'm glad that all the power... The Bible says that in Him we live and we breathe and we have our being. In fact, the Bible says in uh, Lamentations 3 and 22, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassion... Faileth not. Amen. You know what? Since I've been saved, I've needed the Lord's compassion. Sure. I've needed His mercy. I've fallen short. Just because you get saved doesn't mean you'll never fall short again. That's right. Just because you get saved doesn't mean you'll never make a mistake again. Just because you get saved doesn't mean you'll never commit a sin again. True. It just means Amen. now you've got an advocate in your life that you can go to and you can say, Father, I've sinned. I've fallen short and I need your help. I would today that if you don't know him, today you come to know him. Yes. Today you come to know him. I don't know how many people are out there watching in, I like call it Facebook world. There's a bunch. If you don't know him out there, you don't have to kneel at this. This is what they call a mourner's bench. Yes. Tom and Dina got that for me for Christmas about five years ago, I believe it is. This is called a mourner's bench. We don't call the altar what they used to call the altar. Amen. It's where people used to come and mourn yes. for their loved ones. Used to come and mourn for their own lives. Used to humble themselves down. You know what I like about this one? It's only about this far off the ground. Why? It gets you down where you need to be at to get in touch with God. Yes. Yes. Humble. The Bible says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He might exalt you in due time. Amen. Maybe there's somebody here on these grounds today that needs to come to meet Jesus and comes, needs to come and know Jesus. As these girls sing, why don't you come? As the girls come back to get us a song, why don't you come? I'm going to ask you all around, if you're in your car, that's fine. If you're outside your cars, I'm going to ask you to stand. Ask them to get us a, a song of invitation. You can leave it on. It's fine. If the Lord is tugging on your heartstrings, I wouldn't be concerned today about the coronavirus. I'd be concerned about salvation. Amen. I'd come right here to this altar. You say, awesome. What about your suit? Are you going to kneel down here with me? I'll lay down here with you if that's what you need to do to get saved. Yeah, amen. Whatever it takes for you to come to know Him today. Whatever it takes for you to come to know Him today. Lay it aside and come and meet Jesus right here as they sing.
today, if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, if you don't know Him as your personal Savior, you say, Austin, I don't know Him, but I sure would like to know Him. I sure would like to know Him. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to come over there to you. I'm not going to try to come take you by the hand. I'm not going to try to come give you a hug. I'm not going to try to do any of that. I want to pray for you and I'll do exactly what I'm telling you I'll do. If you don't know Him this morning as your personal Savior, would you slip your hand up and right back down? 